All right. Day five. A um, couple of things um, we're going to get into as we go further along in this. Uh, first of all, we are going to set the capsules up in larger tanks. Um, one of the features of a tank that you're going to want is a um, tank that holds a lot of water, but also has a fairly wide dimension to it. You don't want a narrow tank that's very tall. You want a tank that has um, pretty good length and width dimensions as well as height dimensions because you want as much surface area of the water to be exposed to the air as possible and that's going to allow for the best gas exchange. And you'll see this when we actually set up the um, paddle tanks. Um, what I'm going to do I don't know if I'll film all of the process, but I have two big um, plastic bins that are probably 30 gallon, at least, and um, right now they're full of rainwater, so I'm going to clean them out, and then I'm going to put dechlorinated tap water in them to move the tables we're going to rear. And it's going to be a huge volume of water, and I'm not filling them up all the way, um, because again, I want that surface area of the water to be fairly large compared to the volume. But you want enough volume so that the tadpole waste dilutes. Um, it doesn't mean don't clean, but it's the difference between having to clean the tank every five hours and having to clean the tank every day. And the cleaner you keep that water, the less stressed the tadpoles will be and the bigger the tadpoles will get. And that's really what we're aiming for when we're rearing tadpoles. Um, when the water quality goes poor, if the tadpoles don't outright die, they'll morph early so that they can um, escape. And the bigger the froglet, the higher chance it has of surviving to maturity. And so we want to produce big, healthy froglets. And so one of the key features is having a tank that has a lot of area for gas exchange to occur. And we're going to see that tomorrow. And so this is a practical consideration. Putting it out there now, what we're going to do now is look at day five. Um, and tomorrow we're going to pick our 30 tadpoles of each species, um, get them in their new tank setups, and we're gonna roll with it. So, here is day five. All right, day five, tadpole comparative ontogeny. So let's see. We have a good number of uh, spring peeper hatchlings. Um, you can see some right there. They're all uh, clinging. You can see them hanging out there. Um, some of them don't look as dorsolaterally flattened as you can see these guys. They're getting more rounded to their rounded shape to their bodies, whereas some of these other guys here, like that guy, he's still dorsolaterally flattened. That guy is still dorsolaterally flattened. They're at various stages in development. Because some hatched yesterday, some hatched today. Um, what you really want to do is kind of take a look here and see, A, are they still living on their yolk? And it looks like they generally are. And B, have the anuses grown to protrude outside the body walls yet? So if we look at this tadpole, there's really not a, uh, it would look like a little tube that extends um, to the tip of the tail, um, perpendicular to the tail. And that's not apparent yet, so it's not ready to start feeding. What these guys do right now is they're going to cling to surfaces. They have a suction disc on the um, belly underneath the mouth that they can use to just kind of stick to things. Let me just get this gunk off of the side. Their bellies are still full of yolk. They've just started hatching, even if they were ready to start feeding. There's enough material in there for them to feed on for now. So we've got these guys. And our wood frog tadpoles are in the same boat. They've started hatching today on day five. And they're also dorsolaterally flattened. Not too much development has gone on as far as becoming rounded swimming tadpoles. They've kind of just hung out on the bottom and clinging to things. Kind of just um, finishing up their development in a semi-motile state, which probably reduces their vulnerability to predators. Um, yeah, we can see a tadpole over there. So what I'll probably do tomorrow is an important thing where I'm going to take bigger tanks and I'm going to um, put the tadpoles um, about 30 of each 
into a bigger tank into bigger tanks and we're going to rear those and the rest we're going to release where we got them from um and i'll talk in this video so i'll i'm filming this now and then i'll film the intro later i'll talk in the intro about um the importance of large tank size and things like that and things to consider for the tadpoles in that video so um it'll be an exciting kind of thing to talk about and we will um get to it and we'll watch them develop as tadpoles